What's up people, Person here, and today we're going to talk about how can you play Hearthstone the most efficiently if you're free to play. Now the game is expensive, as we might have seen with the recent Outcries, we made three videos about that, and I don't want to focus too much on the negative side of events at the moment, I want to give you something like a guide on how you can maximize the fun you can have in the game while being free to play. Spend as little money as possible, hopefully zero, to get as much out of the game as possible. Even though, in the very first week when I started playing this game, I spent money on it, for the longest time I only ever pre ordered expansions so I get the card back. In the very first year of playing I only played midrange paladin, a single deck that I built by myself, it was not good and my highest rank was rank 11. That was in the old system before we had like diamond and gold and stuff like that. Usually when it comes to being a budget player you can pretty much do two things. Craft a hyper aggressive deck and go to legend and craft Whispang, and then you get 1 out of 20 decks that change every single expansion. Those are pre-made decks, which only work in wild, despite being standard decks. Kinda weird. And then you play with that. But that doesn't sound like fun, or like many options you have. Also, if you think about that, if you craft a budget deck and you go to Legend, which, by the way, video about that here. Three decks that you can use in wild to get to Legend quite easily. Then you start playing the deck, you understand it, you know what to do against every single opponent. And then, what? You're Legend. You get a card back, and then... What do you do? Do you keep playing the exact same thing? Forever? That doesn't sound like fun. I know the main goal for most of us is, if we never got to Legend, is to get Legend. Once. And then when we are in Legend, what do you do? No, you wanna experience the game, you want to play different things. You might watch YouTube videos about people doing interesting combos, playing meme decks, and just having fun in the game. But then you realize every card you want to craft, every single deck you're interested in, is way too expensive. But before we start, here's a message from me from about two or three weeks ago. Don't get me wrong, virtual cards are great and all, but what about physical cards? You gotta store them somewhere. And this video is brought to you by The Rich Wallet. The perfect way to store your Yu-Gi-Oh cards, I mean real cards, to carry them around in a sleek and modern design. Looks a lot better, doesn't it? You want some reviews? Sure, here are some reviews. Over 40,000 five-star reviews, that's like a lot of reviews. Everyone has like an old wallet they used for years, and no one ever thinks about getting a new one. So maybe you can treat yourself or somebody else for the upcoming holidays with a new rich wallet. You can get 10%, that's like two hands full of percentages, off of your order if you use code SOLEM, that's me, in your checkout. So make sure to click the link down below, and I would say thanks again to The Rich Wallet for sponsoring this video, and let's get back to it. What a smooth transition. Now let's talk about how you can maximize your dust when it comes to being a free-to-play player. When you make longer videos on YouTube, you always have a script, at least some notes that you know what you want to talk about. The first thing I wrote down is, you shouldn't be an optimist, you shouldn't be a pessimist, you should be a realist. Because if you look at your collection and you think you will never have fun in the game, you won't have any fun, doesn't help you. If you think you can achieve more than you can because your deck is not good, but you still want to get to Legend, it also doesn't help you. That might disappoint you. So we gotta be realistic here. How much dust do you have? What cards can you craft? And what is your goal in the game? If your only goal is to get to Legend, I made this specific video right here, in which I talked about three different decks. Those were Token Druid, Secret Mage, and Art Paladin. All those decks are wild, by the way. So if you are a standard player, maybe you want to play wild, because those cards are available forever. They don't rotate out every single year in April. You can keep those cards forever. It's cheaper in the long run. But to those three decks, just so you can see that those decks actually work, those are the global statistics from people that played those decks. As you can see, pretty much every deck has 70% win rate. So if you play 10 games, you will win 7, you lose 3. On average. If your only goal is as a free-to-play player to get to Legend, then really just play one out of those three decks and you will make Legend 100%. You spend like 5,000 dust on a deck, maybe only 3k depending on how many cards you have. You might have to craft like one or two Legendaries. Now you want to play expensive decks. You want to play control deck, a different style of deck. Maybe even a meme deck. Do you like Gonk Druid? You can Gonk. And soon you notice, Gonk is a Legendary has the exact same chance of dropping a Zephyrus. To craft the card, 1600 dust. But one card is needed for most Reno decks, and the other card is Gonk, that you're playing in one specific meme combo. And then you get discouraged, because the fun deck you would like to play, it's too expensive. You can't play it. And even if you could afford it by disenchanting a lot of cards that you don't play, you would then be trapped with the deck, because you can't do anything else. If you have no dust and you only have one deck, not much you can do. Which then brings us to, which mode do you actually want to play? Do you want to play wild? Do you want to use every single card that ever got printed in the entire game? Hall of Fame, sets that rotated out, all of that is available in wild. Do you want to play standard, only the newest set of cards? Do you want to play duels and then realize the class you would like to play is not available, so you make your deck, retire and start again? For that you only need 15 cards and you can use the exact same 15 cards over and over. Maybe you want to play arena, but if you want to play arena then this video is probably not for you. Or do you want to play battlegrounds, which is free and by the way if you want to spend like 2000 something gold on the battlegrounds pass where you see like advanced stats and whatever, the advanced stats don't help you. Like that's my screenshot, I played the game for like 9 hours. The advanced stats don't do anything. You don't need to buy that. It gives you an additional hero 
hero though to choose from at the start of the game, so it's kind of necessary. You want to play standard, you need at least one good deck, same for wild. Upset of wild is, you can always play that card, no matter when, no matter what, unless it gets nerfed. So let's get back to you want to play control deck. And for example, Reno decks are really popular, as well as Cube Warlock. Every single time I play Reno Mage on stream, people say, wow, only 16 legendaries, that's a cheap deck. If you look at the deck list right now, you can see this deck is really expensive. You have like 8 epics, 16 legendaries, and then it still has a lower win rate than any of the 3 aggressive decks I showed you earlier. But you think it's fun, you want to play for memes, you want to actually control the board and make decisions that matter instead of just dragging face, and then you win. The first thing you should do whenever you want to play a specific deck is, look at the cards you actually need for that deck. So despite there being like 16 legendaries in this deck, those are the cards I think that are needed to play this. Reno, Reno, and Reno number 3. You don't need Dragon Queen Alex, you don't need Zephyrus, the only cards you really need for a Reno deck are those three. And here's why. You play a Highlander deck to get the effect of healing back to 4. That's why you have Reno. The second Reno clears the entire bot usually on turn 6 and develops a body. Do you often get that card on turn 6? No. So you can also play that deck without it. I just thought it's called Reno Mage, we put on Reno. And the last Reno is just clear the entire bot and then random. Whenever you're missing a card, you gotta substitute that for something else. So let's take a look at some of the cards in here that you can just substitute. Zola. It adds a copy of a minion back to your hand. You usually play Zola as well as Reno together. So if you face an aggressive deck, you get the second Reno back to your hand. Well, you can just play Youthful Brewmaster. That's a common. 40 Dust. Do you need Lothap? If your opponent has a bot clear and you have lethal on the bot, then you could prevent that from happening, but often does that happen? Not that often. Most of the decks you face anyways are aggressive, so you can just cut that. Do you need Barista? No. Do you need Caligos? What does it do? It gives you a spell for free. Why not just include the spell you want to have? So most of the legendaries, as fun as they seem, they really have a basic effect that you can just replace. And then, even when it comes to arena decks at the moment, the aggressive version of arena deck that has almost all the cards cost 6 mana or less are way more efficient than the decks that have like 10 cards that cost more than 8 mana and stuff. For example, this Reno Mage list is focused around secrets. And only has like 8 legendaries in here. It's also Reno Mage, but it's a more aggressive take. And they look at the legendaries that are still in this list. You got Bran. How often do you need Bran? Pretty much never. Do we need Cthulhu the Shattered? No. I played Reno Warlock for like 20 games this expansion with all the odd gods because the odd gods are 10 mana, they're interesting, they have cool effects, everybody likes them. I played Cthulhu a single time in 20 games and he wasn't even needed. Then we got Sage in here. Well, what else draws cards? Arcane Intellect. The card is free. It is also quite interesting to see whenever people want to craft a specific legendary but then ask, can I play this deck without the card? Yes, you can. Unless the deck resolves around a specific legendary that you 100% need to pull off a combo, or to do something like, let's say, Raza Priest, you need Shadow Reaper Anduin, you never need to craft the legendary. Like, what if you draw 29 cards and the last card in your deck is the legendary you're missing? Whether you have the card or not, makes no difference. Also, when it comes to crafting stuff, craft commons first, then rares, then epics, and lastly, legendaries. I would actually say, don't craft any of the legendaries ever, unless you can afford it. But let's say you just want to play for fun. You don't want to play to win, you don't want to have an efficient deck, you don't want to control the bot or anything like that. You just want to play for fun. How can you maximize fun? I get good news for you. There's a card that is called Renounced Darkness. Two epics, 800 dust in total, and you just need 28 other Warlock cards. When you play Renounced Darkness, your entire deck and hero power is replaced with the ones of another class. And all the cards cost minus one mana, meaning it's kind of fun. The fun part in the game comes from random because the outcome is different every single time. If you know what to expect, in every single game, you're just reliving the same experience. But if it's random, you play a new game every game. What I would also recommend if you go for that, have double plot twist in your deck. Just so you can actually draw Renounce Darkness before like turn 8. And for the last tip that I would give you to actually enjoy the game, build your own deck without crafting anything. Just the cards you have available at the moment, put in as many as possible that you think are good enough to win a game. You will be surprised how much fun you can have when you use cards that you never see anywhere. And when it comes to those cards, most of them are probably going to be common cards or cards that are neutral. So if you want to really get into the dust economy and how to maximize absolutely everything, only craft neutral cards that different decks that you would like to play across classes have in common. So if you want to play only aggressive decks in wild, maybe you want to craft patches. It's a legendary that can see play in pretty much every single aggressive deck. You want a hero power for free? You get tour guide. You want to play even more aggressive? Battle Mage, Dire Maul, Voracious Reader, Haunted Creeper. All those cards can be put into pretty much any aggressive deck and you should be fine. Hearthstone should be far less expensive than it is. I think it would be really nice if older expansions, at least the ones that are in wild, are like reduced by like 10x. 
or you have something like a one week period in which you can try out a card and then still disenchant it for the full value. And any card game you play in real life, when you can buy and sell cards, in the worst case you buy a card that you don't like and then you sell it for the exact same price or a little bit under value. But in Hearthstone you craft a card, you play it once, realize you don't want it, and then you lose 75% of your investment, so... Yep, rip. If you have any other tips of being a free-to-play player yourself, feel free to share it in the comments down below. Maybe you inspire somebody to do something specific. Maybe you want to craft Gruul, play Ogre. If you watched until now and you haven't subscribed already, then maybe you want to check and make that sub button turn gray or something. My name is Solom. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them down below and I will make sure that maybe they get answered, perhaps. Thanks so much for watching and take care.